How to do different customizations when using Tailwind CSS. In today's video, I'm going to teach you just that. And not only that, but you're going to see my dog Ragnar hanging out in the background as well, which is worth watching till the end of this video. So this is a project that I created and it's available linked below on GitHub. You can get clone this and then run NPM run dev and then you should see this website and I'm on the customization page. So we're going to go over a few different ways that you can customize your Tailwind projects or customize Tailwind within your projects. So here you can adjust your theme at scale within your tailwind.config.js file. For example, you can adjust colors, fonts, spacing, etc. And we can see the color docs here by control clicking on this link here. That doesn't really look like a link because I'm going to be honest with you guys. I didn't particularly try to make this the best kind of style of application. I just wanted to like keep my notes here and have this here to show some examples to you guys. So let's go over to these custom color docs and this is way too zoomed out here. So let's pull in on this and down here below, you can see an example that they show. So within the tailwind.config.js file within the module.exports object, you can have a theme property and this is where you can add different customizations to your theme. So your font sizes, your spacing within your application, all this can be done right within your config. So this will automatically apply some of these things when using your Tailwind classes. So in this example, you can see that they add these different colors here within their theme. So this would be accessible by theme.colors. And then you have transparent color, a white color, a purple color, midnight, so on and so forth. So they're adding these different colors to their theme. And if you've written applications before, you probably know that it is super useful having different colors within your theme that maintain consistency throughout your application. And then you can see that the way that they can use this is, well, you can use the hyphen midnight hyphen Tahiti and different things like that. And I know I probably just butchered Tahiti, but you can see that they can select these different colors within their classes here because they added them to their theme. So let's go ahead and show you how to do this. So heading over to our application here, and this is a Next.js app. So this is React code that you're seeing here. This isn't really specific to React or Next.js, but one thing that is specific to React or Next.js is that this is class name instead of class. If you're using just regular HTML, this would be class. This is a Next.js or React specific thing. Not particularly important for this video though. But we're going to go to our tailwind.config.js file and what we can do is i can add a theme property here and then within this theme property i can add a i believe it's a colors property and then within my colors property i'm going to go ahead and just copy one of these colors here so what should i do here well i think midnight sounds kind of cool so i'm going to copy midnight and then this hex code i'm going to come back here and i'm going to paste that in here so within module.exports within my tailwind.config file i have created a theme property containing a colors property containing a midnight property pointing to a hex code so the way that i can use this within my tailwind classes is i can go so on my paragraph here, new class name, and I believe it's text hyphen color hyphen midnight. And this should change this text color to my midnight color that I've defined in my theme here. Unless I mess something up, then it's not going to change it. So if I come back, we can see that it did not indeed change it. Let me refresh just to make sure that I did indeed mess that up. So let me come back here. And what I actually think I need to do, instead of doing text color midnight, I think it's just text midnight. So let's go back here. Sometimes I forget the specific syntax behind these classes. But over time, you get the, get the hang of it. So it is indeed just text midnight. So you see, you get this kind of dark bluish color. So hopefully this is coming through on the screen here. Just to zoom in there nice and close, you can see it is that midnight color. So that is how you can add custom colors to your theme. And this would be a very similar thing if you wanted to add different font families, different spacing, like you wanted to have a certain you know, margin between your, your paragraphs here or something like that. You could easily add that to your configuration file and then use them within your classes. Very similar how I did there. Now, 
you don't necessarily need to just add things to your theme to do this. You can also use arbitrary values. And you can do this by using square bracket notation. For example, you can do text hyphen square brackets 32 px, close square brackets. So this is gonna make, if I added this class right here, it's gonna make this text 32 pixels. So you can add just kind of these magic constants here, these arbitrary values, or you could do a background is a certain color. Now to handle spaces, so for example, say you want to put something as grid columns, one FR, 500 pixels, two FR, or you wanted to do something like border, one pixel solid black. Well, in CSS, those are all going to be separated by spaces. But in Tailwind, you can't like separate your class with spaces. So you actually need to use underscores. So let me show you how both of these work. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this paragraph's text to 32 pixels. So let's come back here. And Tailwind doesn't necessarily recommend using arbitrary values. They more so recommend adding these to your theme or using just out of the box Tailwind classes as that kind of gives you the benefits of cons consistency and not having to rewrite all these values, but this is something that you might need to do for customization purposes. Hence this video, you can see Ragnar is very excited about this video as well. But let me go ahead and add square brackets, and then I'm gonna do text hyphen square brackets 32px. So that should make this paragraph 32 pixels here. And if I come back, you can of course see that this is now much larger, 32 pixels. And then we can also, so like I say here, so instead of grid columns and then one FR space, 500 pixels space, two FR, you can do grid calls, one FR underscore, 500 pixels underscore, two FR. So let's go ahead and take this and Let's go ahead and just put this on my main class just to see it do something. So I'm gonna switch this to display grid. And then we're gonna do grid calls, one of our 500 pixels, two of our. And you can see that definitely changes things and puts things into these kind of three different columns here. And just to show you it's working, if I completely remove those grid columns there, it comes back and just goes into this single column. So that's how you can handle white space within your Tailwind classes, but I'm gonna remove that. And I'm also going to remove this class name here because I don't need this 32 pixels anymore. However, you can also use CSS variables within your Tailwind classes. For example, you can do BG hyphen, and then within square brackets, you can use some CSS variable. You just need to add that variable to some sort of accessible CSS file. So here I'm going to add some variable to my, or actually I already have a variable in my root CSS file here. I have this background color just set to blue. So I'm going to copy this here. We're going to head back to my customization page and let's go ahead and put this class name here as bg hyphen, and then we're gonna do background color. So this should access my CSS variable and make this paragraph's background color blue. And if we come back, we do indeed see that this now has this blue background color. So you can access your CSS variables by using the square bracket syntax, and then just passing in your variable name, assuming you have defined that variable within your root CSS here. And additionally with score brackets, you can use things like pseudo selectors. So for this example, you can use the score brackets, then you can use the ampersand side, colon, nth child, fifth child, colon hover, colon underline. So what this should do is if I add to this paragraph a class name of this right here, what it should do is since this paragraph I believe is the fifth child, so we have the main element, and then we have child one, child two, motorcycles are going by right now and it's kind of annoying me, child three, child four, and child five. Also nothing against motorcycles, just don't love them when I'm recording my videos. But this is the fifth child, so when I hover over this paragraph, 
it should make it underlined. And you can see I used a pseudo selector by using the square bracket notation here. So if I come back and I hover over this, you can now see that it does indeed underline this fifth child. So you can use square brackets here to use pseudo selectors and just to show you that this is working for a pseudo selector here. If I put it on my fourth child and then I highlight my fourth child here, you can see that it doesn't highlight this fourth child. But if I wanted to change this, I could change this to fourth child. And then now you'll see it does indeed add the underline to both. So that is some cool ways you can use square bracket syntax within Tailwind. You can use it for arbitrary values, you can use it for CSS variables, and you can use it for pseudo selectors to add more customization to your Tailwind classes. Now, you can also add base styles. So like, usually you might do like a base reset in your root CSS, like setting all of your different you know, font families and font sizes and different things like that. And Tailwind suggests that you can add these to your body element or your HTML element and just add a class name to it. So for example, if you wanted to set the default text color of all of your, your content to red, then you could, to your body element, add the class name of text red 500. So within our Next.js app, we can go to our root layout component. This is just a Next.js thing. And I'm going to add text red 500 to my body and I must have messed something else up and so here's I'm actually glad I rated to this well kind of because I think this is a common mistake so in your tailwind config so in my theme right here I'm not necessarily extending the default theme here so when I'm adding this colors property here I'm not extending the default colors that Tailwind gives me. So that means that I'm overriding like Tailwind's text red color or text blue or text white. So I'm not extending them here. So I'm actually not seeing this work, but I'm pretty positive that if I comment this out, then I come back, I see my text red is now working. So the way that you can actually get around this, and this is actually really good that I rate it to this, is I can use extend and then add my colors property in there. So now it's going to basically extend all this Tailwind colors and the Tailwind theme, and it's going to add my own custom colors as well. So now we can see my blue is still working here, my midnight color, but I also have text red working because now I'm extending Tailwind's theme rather than just overriding it. So actually very glad that I ran into this. When adding these custom values to your theme, if you want to just extend your theme, this is very similar to with using breakpoints. If you want to just extend your theme, do theme.extend and then the properties that you want to extend. But if you want to completely overwrite the Tailwind theme, then you're just going to do theme.colors or theme.spacing to completely overwrite it. All right. So use the extend object if you want to extend the Tailwind theme, but don't use it if you just want to overwrite all the values. And you can see that's a clear example of kind of how that works. All right, so hopefully that's clear and hopefully that saves you from making that mistake in your own applications. So that's how you could do that. Now, let me get rid of this because that looks absolutely awful. So I'm going to remove that, but there's a couple of other customization things that we can cover here. So if you want to use your Tailwind theme within CSS, you can use the built-in theme function Tailwind gives you. For example, you can add a button blue class, and then you can set the background color to calling a theme function, and then accessing your theme colors to colors.blue.500. But let's actually make a button that has a background color of our midnight blue, because we added that to our theme. So within our CSS, and I'm going to actually, I'm going to copy this here, but let's go to our global CSS. And I'm going to just do button blue background color is calling our theme function. And I'm going to just do colors dot midnight. So this theme function, we get it from Tailwind automatically. And this is going to allow us to use values from our, our theme here. So I could use all the values from the default Tailwind theme. 
So like color red, so on and so forth, because I'm now extending it instead of just overwriting everything. But if I do theme.color.midnight, I should see this midnight blue color for this background color if I add a button blue class name. So let's go ahead and let's add a button to the bottom of this page here. I'm going to do button and I'm going to just call it blue button and I'm going to add the class name of, I think it was just BTN hyphen blue. And if we come back, we see I now have my button that is that background color of blue. So that theme function allows us to access our different theme values from our Tailwind theme within our CSS, which can be super useful if you're using both CSS and Tailwind within your applications. And if I change this to, we could do colors dot red dot 500, that's going to access Tailwind's default red color. So that is how you can use Tailwind theme values within your CSS. And similarly, if you want to have your own CSS media queries, but you want to base those on your Tailwind breakpoints, you can use the built-in screen function. For example, at media screen, so calling a screen function, and then using your Tailwind SM or small breakpoint. So I'm going to copy this here. We're going to come below this dot button hyphen blue. And I'm going to use this small breakpoint. And let's just make this button blue within, let's actually do a medium breakpoint. So MD. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to paste it here. So this should make our button blue when we are at a medium breakpoint and above. Tailwind is mobile first. So when you're adding your breakpoints, you're styling larger devices because by default, you're styling smaller devices. So if I come back, we see that it does have the red background, which is what we would expect. But if I make this a bit smaller and scroll down, we see it no longer has that red background because we're using a media query to apply this style based on our Tailwind medium breakpoint, our MD breakpoint. So we use this screen function and use our SM or MD or LG breakpoints from Tailwind, and we can access those within our CSS file in case we want to really conjoin our CSS and Tailwind together. So that is how you can add different customizations within Tailwind CSS. Hopefully you enjoyed this Tailwind course. I'll be making future videos to where I use Tailwind in like more practical real world applications. But this course should definitely get you started with knowing the fundamentals of Tailwind. So thanks for checking this out and I will see you in that next one.